Hey everybody, and welcome to a quick tutorial on cube maps. So this is a tutorial where you, um, I'm expecting you to already know um, basic lighting and how to use shadow maps to block sunlight already um, based on the other lighting tutorials. So let's just get into it. Um, this is a room. This is a basic room without a cube map. Uh, you can see that it's pretty gray all the way around. Like it's just, just bland and gray. Um, this is a bright light in the center. Uh, it's not really doing anything. It's not really brightening up the room in any meaningful way. If I change it to red, it stays red. The rest of the room is still pretty bland and gray. Uh, this is a room with a cube map. Um, it's here, but it's not used properly. It fits the exact dimensions of the room. And what you want to do is you want to buffer your cube maps by a lot. Overlapping cube maps is okay. Um, this doesn't have to be precise. This Cube maps are extremely... Uh, what's the word for it? Like they're more organic. Like you can you can overlap them. You're just trying to get the effect that you want uh, that works best for your scene. So in this case, I'm just buffering this out by a lot. Uh, it doesn't really matter the size uh, as long as it's not you know as long as your room looks good. Just make sure that you know you buffer it, um, and that would be good. Uh, the other thing that you can see is um, this lighting source here. Now when I because it's close to the origin of the cube map, which is important to note that any lighting source closest to the center of your cube map is going to brighten the rest of your um, space that is affected by the cube map. So if I change this to red now, uh, look at how um, the darks are now, uh, the room is much darker now and it's catching the red ambient lighting uh, here much better, which is great. Now if I were to turn this up to, I don't know, 33, you could see that like, the whole room is now much brighter because of this. Um, and as I slowly increase the value, you can see that the ambient um, lighting from the cube map affects all the walls around it. And this will happen if you put it close to uh, lava and stuff like that too. Anything with like emissive color, I think, affects this. So just uh, you know, keep that in mind when you're doing stuff. Now, uh, this next room is a similar thing I've cranked this light up to 33 but you can see that the whole room is pitch black and that's because my cube map isn't anywhere in here it's actually underneath in a small box that's just a blank box flipped on its side here this is another way to control the ambient lighting in a room so let's say I wanted to um, and I've just stretched this to the whole thing right And if I put this cube map up here it's gonna make everything bright because of that light right so if I bring this back down um, into the dark and then I put another light in here put like a little soft light in here you can see that it starts to affect these walls right and it's the same same process before now if I go to like blue in here it's gonna make these walls a little light blue I can start to do uh, much brighter walls and that's just gonna start affecting things you can get some interesting lighting effects with this I use this method in the campaign um, to do some cave lighting because my cube map ended up being out in the void and it was catching sunlight. So I just dragged a cube around um, my, my cube map and it helped me um, adjust the lighting on my caves a little bit better. I went into the brightness setting and I kind of toned it down to like 0.5 or something like that. Um, I suppose real quick I can touch base. I, the volume size is pretty standard. I usually just use the little nodes here. Uh, probe center actually manipulates the blue box. So if I were to change this to like 44, you could see that it just moves it up. Um, I don't use this at all because I prefer to know exactly where my cube map center is at all times. Um, brightness, you can just manipulate this and you can see for yourself it starts to manipulate or multiply the values there. And importance is a good one. We'll get into that next. But essentially, the higher the number, the more important it is to that particular area that it's touching. So right now, one is this was the default, but let's say I had another one over here or something like like maybe there's one here, and just at this like 0.25 brightness. But then I wanted this one to be more important, so you could set that to two, um, and it's gonna start messing with things in here. And you can I think you need to play from here or play to actually see the results there, um, but I actually don't know if this is the best setup for this, uh, but yeah. So um, let's go to organics and just weird, weirdly shaped areas, right? So in this case, I've got something that's mostly on a 45 here. 
Um, but yeah, we'll just center the cube map to our area where the sunlight's going to hit the most and kind of buffer it just to make sure that it covers everything. Um, I like to buffer mine quite a bit because it just fills everything out with the color. Right now we're using this really gross kind of yellow color and I wanted to showcase um, what, you know, what would happen if we wanted to do an interior now, okay? Let's say we wanted an interior now and you can see that this whole interior is yellow and it's kind of gross um, and you really want the lighting to be dark or just different in here. Uh, so what we'll do is we're going to drag another cube map around this building. Just going to do that and we'll have it be buffered by a little bit. And I'm going to stretch this out and quite down. <coughs> cool. Okay. So now that we've done that, you can see that it's more unified <laughs> and it's yellow. Uh, so it's less um, it's less kind of spread out with the values on the floor and the walls and the ceiling. It's more unified. And what I'll do now is I'm going to change the brightness to... I'm going to lower the brightness so that it has less effect. Like the ambient lighting has less effect on this room. And I'm going to put in a just a normal light. And you can see that it really just absolutely affects the color in here. There's no more yellow um, in this room and you can start to kind of place your lighting around a little bit better. Um, we can change the lighting in here. We'll do like a nice blue color. Um, I can extend the range. We can add some shadows here. Um, and you can see that these these areas start to um, work pretty well. The only thing that you kind of have to adjust here is like the expectations for the outside stuff because this is uh, this is on the inside now. So what we'll do is we'll mess with the importance here, and we'll probably bring this up to two, um, and we'll leave that at one. But that's kind of the way that we'll do that, and I'll just kind of get this a little bit closer to the interior, um, so it doesn't uh, drag the outside stuff in quite as much. And uh, the lighting here, you know, you would probably want to to uh, to like tweak you know your values here or like add some more lighting here to kind of like help protect this like backside um, but yeah it's looking pretty good things are looking nice let me this here and uh, yeah I don't have any Sun in this it's actually just a uh, big box right now so there's no Sun whatsoever and that does help when you're lighting your levels so you won't get these like ambient weird spots back here uh cool yeah that about covers it for now thanks